And when I press space, that little green archer dude, he's gonna lose 50% of his HP. Oh yeah. Hello, how are you? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Alan and I'm making a tactics game. This video is a little bit different than I normally, than a normal video. Normally I do about two weeks of work and then I try to make piece together a video from that work. But right now, as we're, as we're talking, I haven't done any new work yet. And I've decided I'm gonna try and see if I can record as I go along and we'll see what kind of what comes out of that. So it's a bit of an experiment, this video. So let me know what you think in the comments below. So we're gonna keep it simple since it's the first time doing something like this. And I was gonna focus on one feature and that feature is gonna be the effect tiles on my tactics game. We've had these lava tiles around the map since we've started developing, but they don't do anything yet. So the plan is to get lava tiles implemented to that. If a character stands on them, they get burned. And that's it, that's all we're gonna do. So sit back and buckle up and let's jump in and then to just break down what our effect crypto object is going to look like in my head it's not done yet obviously is that i i kind of envision this kind of very generic object that will kind of work for every situation so um, there's going to be four variables all right so there's going to be a stat which is going which is a list of possible options it's basically going to enum of all the possible stats that could be manipulated on a character so everything from health to mana to defense to speed whatever you want to call it all that would be contained in this then it would have a kind of like an operator value right like an operator god i need to switch over to like photoshop or something up or whatever operator it's going to be basically a minus or a plus maybe a, maybe a times and divide as well but we'll see about that but this you just take in one of these four values and that will tell us how we are going to manipulate the stat and then it would have a value so how much the stat would be manipulated by, right? Give an example there. And then a duration, uh, X tones. Oh, I just realized that I was covering some of the text, but so this is, could be an example of what our lava tile would be, right? So the lava tile effect would be, have the stat would be equal to health. We'd have a minus operator. If value might be 10, our duration would only be one tone. So it just happens to tone you're on it and then that's it. And then like another step up of that would be maybe a bone effect where it could be the exact same thing, except just we could just increase the tone value. So it's boned. And that's my thinking right now. So I'm gonna try and implement this and then I'll come back to you and we'll see how, how it all worked out. Before I jump into the next part, I just wanna say a big thank you. 310 subscribers. This means the world to me. Uh, it's just it's just such a great motivator to see the number going up and it gives me a reason to keep working on this project when otherwise you know I'm, I'm just, like lots of us we all quit half, like halfway through and just seeing seeing this number going up is just is it's all the motivation I need to keep going and uh, it's just so helpful and I'm just I'm just really grateful so to all the everyone who's new and returning just thanks it means a lot and uh yeah no more no more uh soppy shit let's let's make some lava so it is 10 p.m and i am ready to wrap up for the day um so let's have a little one through on how far i've gotten and what's going on in my head so here we have a scriptable effect which is a scriptable object and it is exactly what i said it was going to be so we have a buff key which is from a list of possible stats i should change that to stat key actually now that i'm thinking about it um, we have an operation which is from a list of operations that we can have uh, and we have our duration or value and then we have a get buff key because i couldn't figure out how to get like a so this will get buff key will literally give us back the name of the stat in a string value instead of in its stat list value which is what we want for our next part in character data so hang on so a scriptable effect would look something like this so here i've created lava effect and it buff key is going to be health minus we're going to do minus by percentage which basically is going to mean rather than just minus it minus the health by a flattened value it might minus it by like you lose five percent of your current health and yeah so that's that and if i wanted to create another another one I can do something like it's all here so scriptable effect we can call this attack buff right oh once abilities appear maybe i would name it after the ability so we're going to say attack it's going to be an add operation it can be like maybe for five tones and we're going to buff the attack by 10 something like that right maybe add that could possibly be something based on percentage as well because maybe level needs to come into that like so if if you add 10 that 10 is going to be different like it's going to have different values based on the level of your guy right if you have 100 attack 10 attack increase is like a one is like a, is a, it's a 10 percent increase in damage but if you have a thousand attack 10 is like a one percent increase in damage so so this actually needs to be add by percentage that's what that would need to be 
then after that, we would go to our character data and we can apply the effect to a character. Basically, we give the character a stat modifier. It's not technically being applied yet. It's just that now the character has the information it needs um, within these stat modifiers. Our stats are stored in a directory where we basically, a dictionary, sorry, where it's a string and it's a stat. So it's, I don't know why I did it that way, just the way I did it. But yeah, I thought that was, that's just the way that works. And then when we apply an effect, we use the name of the attribute and then we create a stat modifier, which basically tells, it's going to tell the character what it needs to do. So when we go to our definition here, we have our stat modifier, which is basically a carbon copy of our, of our, of our scriptable effect, but you don't want to edit scriptable effects because you just want that to be stored as a, like a, a, it's almost like a template or an object. This is what's going to like, so for example, duration is going to be minus minus when, when we want this to, but you don't want to minus the duration of the scriptable effect. You want to minus the duration of the stat modifier, if that makes sense. And then on tone end, or maybe tone start, that's something to think about actually. On tone end, we would call this up the character we would loop through all of the character stats and call this apply stat, which would look at the operation and change the character's stat value based on its operation. And just as one more line that I forgot, I just realized that I was missing the duration bit. So I just added in stat mod minus minus. And if the duration is less than zero, so if it has no tones left, we set the stat mod to null and then we won't go into here when it gets called. So I think this would work. It's going to work for us pretty nicely. I don't have time to test it right now. So we'll see what I am messing up with. I'm going to put some more thought into that and figure it out. Well, tomorrow I'll get on this and I'll test it a bit and see what mistakes I've made. But yeah, that's where I am. Thanks. So I was just looking at recordings from the last day I was I was doing this and I realized I don't know how I'm going to split it all up. I, two seconds ago, I was like, I'll be back in a few days and now I'm back and it's been a few days. And now I'm going to be like, I'm going to try to figure this thing out and I'm going to test all of the stuff I did the last day, but it's just going to be like instant, right? All right, look, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to test it all right now. Three, two, one. Oh shit, look at that. I just figured it out. And I even changed my t-shirt while I did it. And when I press space, that little green archer dude, he's going to lose 50% of his HP. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I figured it out. <laughs> And my kind of original explanation is kind of accurate. My my first attempt was pretty good once I actually tested it. There was a few changes that I need to make, but mostly it was good. So let's just do like one final one through of how the whole system works in case somebody else there wants to copy my approach or maybe is trying looking for inspiration on how to do something similar. So we have our kind of effects folder. We have our lav effect, which is a scriptable object that I call scriptable effect. We have four stats or four variables. We have the stat key, which is basically the stat you want to change. We have the operator, so how you want to change the stat. We have the duration, how many turns it lasts for. One basically means it's 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 just going to happen once to the character and then that's it over. And then value is how much it's going to get changed by. So because I'm using minus by percentage, that is going to be 50% of the character's health, current health, by the way, not max health. Then with our effect, we can go to our tile data folder, where these are kind of where we store information about different tile types. So we have a lava tile, and what we know about the lava tile, we know it's distance cost. Well, this is a bit weird. Uh, distance cost isn't used right now. Move cost is what I'm using, but uh, you don't care. You don't care. About that. So anyway, we have some costs, some variables attached to it. We have a, if it's traversable or not. If it is traversable, if it's not traversable, it would be, it's like the water tiles. You can't walk on top of it at all. So it doesn't even have an effect. And we have its effect. And we have the lava tile attached to it. Okay. Then in my pathfinding controller, when a character has finished moving, we check the if the tile has an effect attached to it. If it does, we attach that to its character's data. And then all that does is we attach, we create a stat modifier attached to the set attribute within the character's um, stats directory. We say that it's modified and then that's it. The tone ends. Then you fast forward to the character, it's the character's tone again. And then we search through all of his, we, we search through all of his stats for a modified stat and then we apply that stat mod. Also, if health, I'm doing the damage effect. I imagine there's going to be a whole other system for displaying effects going further down the line, like icon systems and, and maybe character filters, like like a 
like uh, different colorations or something like that. But anyway, once we find a modified stat, we then apply the stat mod. And then based on the operation, we change the stat value. And we minus duration by one. And if it's if the duration is less than or equal to zero, uh, the stat mod gets removed. And that's it. So that is the system done and finished. And it's, I'm pretty happy with it in a state right now. It has some limitations. Like, for example, it's not stackable at the minute. So like each... Each stat can only have one stat mod, which is very changeable. That can be changed quite easily to a list, but I don't have the use for it yet, so I haven't done it yet. And that is pretty much it. That's how you implement, or how I implemented, a effect system on my tiles for my tactics game. This is not a tutorial. This is just, I'm just a guy trying to figure things out. <laughs> Disclaimer at the end of the video. But I hope it helped someone, and I hope it maybe inspired some ideas for your own game, and hopefully that worked out for you. Sorry about the, this, this is, quite a low effort video and I'm kind of curious what you guys think so let me know in the comments just give me some feedback because it's easier for me to make and if I make videos like this I think it might be quicker to get those videos out and then I'm, I'm not missing weeks anymore rather than having to worry about editing and trying to find like a day to, to make a video so this I think this this could be a good way to go forward I think I'm going to need a lot of practice because this feels slow it feels slow to me and I haven't even made the video yet. So, so I, I already think it's probably going to be quite slow. We'll see what I, how, I can, how I get on. But um, that's, that's, that's it. Uh, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you again.